Okay, so we've just spent some time looking at sequences of functions and some results related to the convergence of sequences of functions. And by convergence, I mean sometimes pointwise convergence and sometimes uniform convergence. Now we're ready to take the next step and look at series of functions. So let's look at the definition first. So let's suppose that fn is a function from a to r, and this is true for all natural numbers n. So that gives us an infinite family of, fun of functions from a to r, so like f1, f2, f3, and so on and so forth. So we say the series, the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of f sub n, converges pointwise or uniformly to a function f, if the sequence of partial sums converges pointwise or uniformly to f. And so let's just recall the sequence of partial sums can be defined as a new function s sub n, which is given by f sub 1 plus f sub 2 all the way up to f sub n. So just like we did with sequences of numbers and series of numbers, we could rewrite all of our results involving sequences of numbers to results involving series of numbers, just using the notion of the sequence of partial sums. And in fact, all of the results involving series of functions also transfer over um, by looking at the sequence of partial sums. So for instance, if each of these functions is continuous, and our convergence to f is uniform, then we know that f also has to be continuous. And then there's a similar result regarding differentiability, but there are a, lot, there are a couple more details for that, so I'll let you check um, what we did in the last video. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is prove this thing called the Cauchy criterion, and that says a series of functions, so this is the sum as n goes from zero to infinity f sub n, converges uniformly on a set A, which is a subset of real numbers, if and only if, for all epsilon bigger than zero, there exists an n, which is a natural number, such that for all x in A, if n and m are bigger than or equal to n, and those are ordered in that way, then f sub m plus one evaluated at x all the way up to f sub n evaluated at x, that in absolute values is less than epsilon. So compare this to the Cauchy criterion for series of numbers. Okay, well let's maybe go ahead and look at the proof of this. And the proof will mimic what we did for the Cauchy criterion for sequences of numbers. So let's maybe do this forward direction first. So in other words, we want to suppose that we have uniform convergence. So suppose this series of functions converges uniformly and we have a sum epsilon bigger than zero. Good. And so now what that tells us is that the sequence of partial sums uh, converges uniformly. So let's write it like this. S sub n, which is F sub one all the way up to F sub n. And we know this converges uniformly and that's because the uniform convergence of the series is predicated on the uniform convergence of the sequence of partial sums. But what that tells us is that there exists a capital N, which is a natural number, such that for all X in A and N bigger than M, bigger than or equal to N, we have the absolute value of S sub N n of x minus s sub m of x is less than epsilon. And this is by the Cauchy criterion for sequences of functions, but applied to the sequence of partial sums. But now let's notice that s sub n of x minus s sub m of x is exactly this thing right here. So notice we have this is equal to f sub m plus one of x, plus all the way up to f sub n of x. And so we have that is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we wanted to show in this forward direction. Okay, let's maybe look at the reverse direction. Okay, so now let's look at the reverse direction. So we're supposing that this statement right here holds, and we want to show that this series converges uniformly. Okay, so let's get to it. So let's consider the sequence of partial sums. So that's gonna be S sub N, which is gonna be F sub one, all the way up to F sub N. And that's gonna be defined for all natural numbers N. And then next, what I wanna do is given 
some epsilon bigger than zero, we will pick a capital N such that if N is bigger than M, which is bigger than or equal to N, and X is arbitrarily in A, we have the following. So we have the absolute value of F sub M plus one of X plus all the way up to F sub N of X is less than epsilon. So we're here we're using our hypothesis, which is this right-hand side of our theorem. But now we're just gonna use the fact that this is equal to that difference of values from the sequence of partial sums, just like we did on the last board, but in reverse. So in other words, I'll notice that this is equal to S sub N of X minus S sub M of X. So notice both directions of this proof relied on the equivalence of these two objects. So in the direction that we're looking at now, we are assuming that this object can be made as small as we want, smaller than epsilon. And then that means that this object right here can be made as small as we want as well. But in the previous direction, our assumption was that this thing converged uniformly so that we know, knew that this object could be made as small as we want. But that in turn implied that this object could be made as small as we want. So that's what made these two directions look pretty similar. Okay, now we can finish off this off pretty quickly. That means that this sequence of partial sums S sub N converges uniformly, but the uniform convergence of the sequence of partial sums is the defining property of the uniform convergence of a series of functions. So I'll just put the sum F sub N, that's also going to converge uniformly which finishes up this reverse direction. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up and then we're gonna look at a corollary to this theorem. Okay, we're gonna finish this off by proving something called the Weierstrass M test. So it goes like this. We've got this sequence of functions F sub N that are defined from A to the real numbers. And then we have a sequence of numbers M sub N that are bigger than zero such that the absolute value of f sub n of x is less than m sub n, and that is true for all x in A. And what we wanna show is that if this series m n converges, then this series f n converges uniformly on A. And we're gonna do this by using the Cauchy criterion for series of numbers and series of functions like we just looked at. Okay, so let's say that we are given some epsilon bigger than zero. Notice that we can go ahead and take n, which is a natural number, such that if n is bigger than m, which is bigger than or equal to n, we have the following inequality. So we'll have the absolute value of m sub m plus one plus all the way up to m sub n is less than epsilon. So let's maybe point this out. This is by the Cauchy criterion for series of numbers. So if you don't recall what that says, well, you can maybe look it up or something. Okay, good. Now, the next thing that I wanna do is look at the object that I'm really interested in, which will be some sum that looks like this, but it's gonna involve this function f and it evaluated at a random point x in a. So let's take x arbitrarily from a and notice we have the following. So we're gonna have the absolute value of f sub m plus one of x plus all the way up to f sub n of x. So that's the thing that we want to make small. If we can make that small, then we have uniform convergence by the Cauchy criterion for sequences of functions, which we just proved. Okay, but this isn't too bad. We can use the triangle inequality to rip this apart. That's gonna make this thing less than or equal to the absolute value of f sub m plus one of x plus all the way up to the absolute value of f sub n of x. Like I said, that's by the triangle inequality. And the next thing that we can do is use this assumed inequality to replace all of these values, this f sub m plus one of x, all the way up to f sub n of x, with m sub m plus one, all the way up to m sub n. So notice I've got that this is gonna be less than 
m sub m plus one plus all the way up to m sub n. Again, that's by our assumed inequality. Now next, we can use the fact that these m values are all positive just to put an absolute value around them. So notice that that's equal to the absolute value of the same sum. And again, that's because we're summing positive numbers. So having an absolute value or not having an absolute value is the same. But now this is gonna be less than epsilon by the construction up here via the Cauchy criterion for series of numbers. So what that tells us is by the Cauchy criterion, for series of functions, um, we have this series of functions, f sub n converges uniformly. And that's a good place to stop.